Welcome uh, to our Operate First Community Cloud Meetup. It's Tuesday, January the 24th in 2023. It's 11 a.m. New York time zone. And yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, the Operate First Meetup, as you may know, is a bi-weekly event open to everyone interested in learning more about how individual teams, projects, and online communities are working towards democratizing the development of open operations under the principles and ideas of Operate First. Um, details you see on the page here, and you can link also to our blog. Um, this meetup aims to embrace the multidisciplinary nature of the current state of operations and cloud infrastructure and for DevOps, data scientists, software engineers, um, and it's all in an open public forum. This meeting is held under the Open Infra Foundation Community Code of Conduct, which you can find under the, um, I put the link in, op1.ft slash community code of conduct. And as always, I invite you to subscribe to our mailing list Follow us on YouTube. Uh, we have Twitter, Mastodon, Slack, GitHub. I will post the links during the meeting. Uh, but for today, I wanted to introduce um, Mertos Lali from uh, the Boston University. He is a part of the AI for Cloud Ops team. Um, they have their own meeting. And um, Mert, you want to say something about your how you got into Operate First or want to start your presentation? Yeah, I have uh, in my introductory slide, I will talk about it. Thank you for the introduction. Let me try to share my screen. Oh. I just need a second. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. All right. And um, hello, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome and thank you for joining this presentation. And my name is Mark Tostola. I'm a fifth year computer engineering PhD student at Boston University. And my research mainly focuses on performance analytics and online experimentation in the cloud. <clears throat> Today, I will first introduce AI for Cloud Ops, which is the first large project funded by the Boston University Red Hat Collaboratory. And then I will present one of the sub projects within that umbrella that focuses on online trace analysis. So with that, let me get started. First, let me give you a bit of background on the AI for Cloud Ops. Today, CI and CD trends encourage rapid design of software for enterprises to succeed. We know that new software must be developed quickly as well as with security and resilience. To provide these critical factors, developers usually rely on customized off-the-shelf software components. However, existing approaches often rely on human experts and they have they might have limited applicability to modern CI-CD cycles because oftentimes they are fragile, costly, and often not scalable. And altogether, this amplifies the difficulty in identifying or fixing the problems. So in this project, we aim to address this gap in the effective cloud management with a systematic approach to building and integrating automated AI-driven software analytics into production systems. And essentially, we aim to provide a rich selection of automated ops functionality, as well as intuitive and easily accessible AI analytics. So our longer term aim is here to demonstrate performance, resilience, and security benefits of automated and AI-driven cloud analytics. So we seek to accomplish our ambitious goal through two interacting lines of research. On the left, you see AI ops at development, and this here is uh, here goal is to provide feedback to developers or scientists during early development stages as well as experimentation phases. These feedback could be in the form of known, known vulnerabilities, software bugs, or other unwanted software identification via AI-driven techniques. On the right, we have AI offset runtime. Here, the goal is to provide an efficient and automated runtime analytics. Uh, some examples could be AI-driven identification of performance variations or reducing large volume of telemetry data concerning privacy and performance constraints. So we want to synergize the latest advances in 
systems and networking with those in applied machine learning in order to grow a new line of research at the intersection of AI and cloud systems. So in our talk today, we will touch base on the AI ops at runtime. So what do we mean by that? The main goal of runtime analytics is to detect and diagnose problems rapidly so that preventative actions can be taken in a timely manner. We aim to deliver this using AI-driven techniques to the runtime data analysis via methods focusing on such as automated diagnosis of performance, cross-layer analysis of code and data in production systems, as well as reducing telemetry data to acceptable levels by operators concerning the privacy and performance constraints. So, Specifically, I will focus on the tracing part of the AI ops at runtime. We have the telemetry part as well as other parts of this project. So we have developed diagnosis framework that effectively traces the sources of performance variations. So our goal here is to localize performance issues automatically in cloud applications. To better understand, we are presenting an architecture diagram on the left and to understand where does our system sit and what is this here with the tracing and what's going on here. So on the bottom, you see a sample application and say running on an OpenShift cluster, such as the Operate First Cloud. And tracing backend such as Jaeger is enabled and providing the traces from this application. And specifically collectors such as Open Telemetry Collector can collect trace points from this underlying sample application. And the database substrate, such as Cassandra DB, can be used to persist these traces for later accesses. And there might exist a UI for developers to browse and observe individual traces from this underlying application. And our analyzer sits on top of this tracing backend. So let's talk a little bit about what is distributed tracing. On the right, you see an example of a trace where a trace composes a narrative of request execution through parts of a cloud application, which makes it easier to pinpoint issues. You see different colored boxes here in this figure that are referred to as spans in distributed tracing literature that, has, that actually corresponds to operations in the code that may reside in the different nodes of your application or different code pieces in a distributed application. So these spans have start and end time, as well as they have relationship between uh, among other spans, which are in the form of parent-child relationships that actually corresponds to color colleague relationships. So by having this relationship, as well as the duration of these spans, you can have the topology view of your application, the breakdown of, of components, and when my request enters the system, which components does it travel through? So by looking at the distributed tracing, you can understand which parts of the system the execution spends most of their time. So it really helps you pinpoint what's going on or pinpoint the performance issues. And in the big picture, we aim to continuously to analyze these traces and come up with the performance investigations in an online manner. So let's talk about our workflow. In the red lines, you see stream of traces exposed by the sample application collected by the collector and persisted in a database. Our system periodically qu queries the tracing backend to collect traces from application iteratively. Later, we want to learn performance distributions of code regions in the applications. For this, we have developed an online Bayesian learning framework that builds belief distributions for each instrumentation choice. Our formulation is essentially enabling a lightweight and online mechanism to effectively and quickly learn these performance distributions of different parts of your cloud application. Later, we want to infer the vital regions in the code that uh, in order to explain the performance variation in end-to-end -end latency of your request. So here we take a percentile-based approach to determine whether a span or instrumented code region belongs to the vital set or not in order to explain the performance variation. Specifically, we drive aggregate statistics of individual spans. So we collect many spans, uh, many observations of a span, and then we drive some statistic out of it, and we mark the ones that fall above certain thresholds. For example, this threshold can be 75th percentile or 90th percentile, 
And the ones that fall above it, we call it vital P or vital set. And we believe that they can explain the ongoing performance variation in the end-to-end -end latency. And we embody a statistically driven approach in order to uh, come up with accurate evaluation of these statistics. Finally, our system surfaces a variety of valuable statistics and insights that help developers interpret the results regarding these localized code regions or spans. And these include contributions of vital spans to the intent latency, ranking of these individual spans, comparison to each other, as well as range of likely values, which are the confidence intervals. So let's talk about our setup on the Operate First Cloud. First, I would like to thank Sally very much for her help in this. And thanks to her, we were at, and Marcel as well, we were able to onboard our project smoothly to the Operate First Cloud. Specifically on a smart cluster, on the smart cluster, we have AI for Cloud Ops namespace. We have deployed Hotel Collector, which is there to collect traces from the underlying applications. And we have deployed Jaeger, which is there to store and visualize traces. And on top of that, we have deployed this application called Quarkus, which is a toy application that helps, uh, that is there for uh, fighting superheroes against supervillains. So it's a very simple application. You can call new fighters and have them fight each other and see the winner. Why did we choose this application? Because it's a very useful application. It consists of several microservices as shown in the figure on the right. And it has many different design and communication patterns. Uh, some of these microservices communicate each other synchronously via REST and others asynchronously using Kafka. So after setting up the application and necessary components, we have started playing with this application and collected many traces. Wow. Sorry, is there a question? I thought I heard. OK. So yeah, here on the left, you see an example trace. And the largest traces come from the Random Fighter API, as we can collect by clicking on the New Fighters button here. And here is an example trace, which consists the largest traces, constitute the largest trace. And the request issued this issued to this API usually take between three to 15 milliseconds. We, that means there's actually a high variance within the end-to-end -end latency of this request. And we wanted to understand what's going on in the system. So for this, we have deployed our tool and use this to analyze and understand what's going on in the Quarkus application. Our framework gradually learned and ranked performance variation contributors. And specifically, we have found out that within the REST hero service, the select hero operation seems to be the highest contributor to the end-to-end -end latency. Essentially, our statistics driven that it constitutes the 86% of the total utility of traces. So, Naturally, we wanted to understand, take a look at the code, what's going on. But before that, we wanted to look at the two different cases for normal and bad behavior. And on the top, we have the bad. And on the bottom, we have the normal behavior. And we found that the duration difference between the same operation for two different requests is actually very high. While looking, so on the top, you see it's on the order of seven milliseconds, while on, on the bottom, it's on the order of microseconds. So while looking at the trace, we also realized that there is a very similar operation going on in the uh, Quarkus application, which is on the bottom here, REST villains. So it's essentially doing the same thing. It's accessing a REST API and later querying a database to fetch a hero. Similarly here, accessing a villain REST API, later fetching a villain from a database. Even though they are doing very similar things, their durations are extremely different. So we decided to analyze these two code execution flows. And let's see here side-by-side -side code comparison on finding a hero versus finding a villain. So on the left, we see accessing a hero DB is implemented via Panache repository. So the Panache provides a reactive style where asynchronous and non-blocking fashion is used to handle uh, unpredictable load or load spike. On the right, we see that accessing a villain DB is implemented in a conventional manner. There is no async pattern. As you can see, 
both of the codes are doing the same thing. They're calling the count and then they're finding all and fetching the first results. Even though they're doing the same thing, they're implemented using different uh, fashion of style. So in particular, we find that due to this implementation difference, there exists a latency difference between these two operations, even though they're very similar. We find that there exists a trade-off between concurrency and latency here. Although the reactive style is good for handling the spikes, we observe a slowdown compared to the conventional implementation in our workload. In the web, while searching what can be the root cause for this, we find that not every application has actually high enough throughput to benefit from non-blocking reactive design. So this actually, this finding can help us reconsider the design of our implementation. So to sum up, we have developed diagnosis framework that effectively traces sources of performance variations in the code. And we deploy this on the operate first cloud as well as some sample applications and necessary components. We have uh, conducted this case study to show that we can automatically localize performance variation to help developers diagnose performance issues as well as find some optimization points in the code. So AI ops at runtime moving forward, we are still in the progress of developing this online trace analysis systems. We want to open source it uh, very soon, which is to automatically diagnose performance variations in the cloud applications as we have just seen. And we have also some other projects in this domain. Uh, one of them is regarding the privacy preserving telemetry. Here we want to reduce the telemetry data that is fetched from a different components in a cloud applications we want to reduce the amount of it while preserving the privacy constraints. We want to uh, conduct a differential privacy evaluation on this real data. And also recently we have started exploring this new idea around trace sketches, which is about efficient, accurate, and scalable mechanism for detecting slowdowns in massive trace data, which a large number of instrumentation. So we want to use some uh, lightweight and low dimensional data structure to represent traces instead of using the whole uh, huge trace data we want to represent it in a probabilistic data structure and use this low dimensional data to be able to come up with these performance investigations so yeah that was about it and thank you very much again for joining and listening to the talk and i'm happy to answer your questions Yes, uh, thank you, Matt, for the presentation. Uh, so from what I understand here, you are using instrumentation uh, on the code to collect uh, the data that you will then analyze in order to uh, perform uh, various operations. Uh, so for this uh, instrumentation, what uh, library did you say that you were using? So yeah, this is uh, distributed tracing. And essentially, you can use various libraries. There are uh, there exist libraries from Open Telemetry, Open Tracing, as well as Jaeger. Okay. And yeah, the Quarkus application is already instrumented with this, so we deployed that application, and it already started exposing the traces. So we sit on top of that, collect the traces, and come up with these investigations. Right. So uh, this library that you're using is it language dependent, or there are different variants for different programming languages? So yeah, for the distributed tracing, there should be different implementation for different languages. And the, the, these libraries that I told, like the Jaeger, Open Telemetry, Open Tracing, I think they have a very comprehensive implementation for various languages. OK. Um, is there anything in your research that tries to analyze the behavior of the application uh, in a non-intrusive way uh, without performing this uh, instrumentation, just collecting uh, as is logs, you know, and the uh, information that basically you can measure, you know, in terms of like number of requests per second that went through, let's say through a load test, you know, collect that data and analyze that instead of performing uh, this uh, uh, code intros introspection. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Uh, in my research, I focus on the distributed traces because the like there exists in the literature, there exists many works that focus on that domain, as you just say, like without using the tracing data, without using instrumentation, can we also come up with this performance investigation? In my research, I focus on tracing because I believe that the tracing exactly corresponds to the code region. So it gives us 
exact point in the exact location in the code so that we can diagnose very much more quickly. Once we localize it to a span, span already corresponds to the code line, for example, then we can understand what's going on in this code line as we have done in our case study. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Marcel? Yeah, thanks, Mert, uh, for the presentation and congratulations to the Operate First community meetup. I think we had our first troll joining them. <laughs> so that's, uh, the, that's the downsides of being popular and being open. Um, <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. Um, for, um, the, the, the analysis for finding the 75% or so I'm not mm -hmm. really a data scientist, but you did some analysis to identify the suspicious traces. Is that um, already somewhat automated or are you doing that in a Jupyter notebook? Uh, it is automated. It is like it is within this uh, our online trace analysis framework, which automatically executes all these steps in the workflow. Oh. And that, that's the part that you're also intending to open source. Yes. Yes. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. And um are you using the Jaeger deployment on Operate First to store all the traces? Yes, as of now, yes, we are using okay. the Jaeger. Mm -hmm. And the the demo application that's I guess also deployed um, to the community cloud. Yeah, smart cluster. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. So, is there any documentation available on how to access that and play around with it? Because I think that's one of the um, main benefits of this Operate First community that I can see how something is being deployed. And then even without deploying it myself, I can somehow touch it, play around with it. Or like if I'm triggering some request, maybe I see something in your framework or at least in the Jaeger console. Mm -hmm. uh, we have used this documentation from Quarkus application that they were showing how to deploy it in an OpenShift cluster. So we have used the same thing. And we have used the Celeste tutorial on regarding how to deploy the Hotel Collector Jaeger. So combining those, we have come up with this. But we can definitely do a single uh, sheet that shows all the steps necessary to be able to execute this case study and deploy our analyzer as well. Yeah. So the lo lowest uh, hanging fruit would probably be a readme somewhere in one of your repositories, in the AI for Cloud Ops repository, for example, with just some pointers mm -hmm. to the um, Jaeger backend and the deployment and whatever you have already open sourced. And then mm -hmm. as um, Thorsten just posted this link uh, of Sally's blog post, which I think is a very good example of a yeah. blog post talking about a topic and then having some links in there um, that points to the actual deployment. Maybe if you have find more time to do that, that would be even more awesome. Definitely, yes. Yeah. As we are planning to open source, this is one of the to-dos in our agenda. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So any more open questions, ideas? OK. Um, <clears throat> Another topic, um, thanks Marcel for joining also, is that we maybe want to widen this meetup here to add a little bit more of community work from Operate First slash Operate First Community Cloud in here. So um, at the end of any demonstration, if somebody wants to maybe talk where Operate First, Operate First Community Cloud is going to, feel free to bring something up on the agenda, write me. Um, or I can open a document for this or in our um, regular repository. And then we can get here together and grow in the community in this nice getting together here, I would say. And we can also make a little bit more a hands-on. So if somebody want to join ideas, has questions about a topic or a project or a repo that he's trying to deploy or to start, we can also discuss this here. And if needed, we can make this meeting a little bit longer or structures differently. But first, I will stay with the presentation at the beginning. And at the end, let's make it a nice, um, yeah, let's call it get together, uh, lessons learned, or questions asked <laughs> about different things that are running good or bad in your project, and that the whole community here can help, maybe, and learn. This would be great. Um, 
as always, I'm putting all the links in here so where you can reach us. This is where you can join. I would appreciate if you um, maybe follow us on YouTube. Oh, Christian, yes, go ahead. Hey, everybody. Uh, just a very quick question. Um, who's going to FOSS them uh, in two weeks? Because I'll be there, and I I, I think um, some of you folks are also going to be there. I'm very much looking forward to meeting um, as many of you as possible. So um, yeah, that's if, if you're coming to uh, FOSS them, uh, let's meet up there. Right. Um, yeah, here, that's a good point. I'm. Um, um, Felix, uh, Carsten, and me, we are running the Dev, um, the Dev Room Sewing Cloud. So feel free to look look us up, uh, come by, um, maybe grab some swag from our table. We are there the whole Saturday, and I'm running around from Friday till Sunday, so you will find us. <laughs> uh, if you don't know exactly... Ah, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> I was just looking for the link. Um, I also posted the link to the AI for Cloud Ops, and um, so yeah, feel free to look it up. If nothing more needs to be said, then I appreciate your time here for showing up. I apologize for the troll we had. I'm not exactly sure how I can manage it without keeping people out, out of Red Hat and stuff like this. So we leave it like this and hope it will stay a one-time thing. And thanks for your interest, and then see you in two weeks. Keep on coding. Thank you. Bye-bye.